Hello everyone, welcome back to the Mainstream Podcast. Um, today I am your host, Chloe Williams. I'm the editor-in-chief here at the Lions War. Um, and today we are actually trying to start a new trend, um, a new type of, uh, yeah, a new trend, a new little thing, um, where we're going to do Book of the Month. So hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, every month uh, someone from the staff is going to come on the podcast and talk about a book that they either recently have read or just, you know, something that, a book they just cannot get off their mind. Um, and hopefully, you know, <laughs> we'll introduce you to, a, you know, a new favorite book or something. Um, so, to start off, my current favorite book. I love this book. Um, it's called Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. Um, I first watched the movie was in love with the movie. It's probably one of my favorite movies on my list now. Um, and I was like, I have to read this book because if the book was just, a, if the movie was good, the book has to be just as good, if not better. And it so was even better than the movie, which I didn't think would even be possible. <sighs> so, um, a quick summary, if you have not heard of this book, um, or the, um, the novelist at all. At all. Um, this is written by Gillian Flynn. Um, this was published in 2012. I was actually kind of surprised. For some reason, I thought, I swear to God, I thought this was like the early 2000s. But no, it was published in 2012. She is super well known for this type of genre. And you're probably asking yourself, Chloe, what genre are you referencing? I am referencing the sort of psychological thriller that pertains to women. She, all of her novels are so women based. They are so written, heavily women focused and inspired. And I love it. I love anything that is written by, for, and about women. Um, like, you know, the Barbie movie, Little Women, like all of that type of stuff I love. This is a bit darker than either of the two I just mentioned but I still love it. Um, yeah, like I said, her books are very heavily inspired by the female gaze. Um, another one of her books that um, got really famous, so famous that it even had its own TV series, I think on Hulu, um, it's called Sharp Objects. It was her first, I think, publication, or at the very least, it came before Gone Girl. Um, that is a TV show now, and it's also, once again, this type of thriller, uh, women-focused type of story. Um, so, what is Gone Girl? <laughs> um, let's talk about it. Um, so I'm just going to read directly from the summary because I feel like it summarizes it pretty well without spoiling anything. Um, so, that is what I said. So, Gone Girl is a psychological thriller, as I mentioned before, that's kind of Flynn's niche, uh, specifically with women. Um, and it's a, a story that, like, switches point of views. Um, so it's usually, it's always either in the point of view of Amy Dunn or Nick Dunn, um, who are the main characters, who are the married couple. So according to the book's own summary, um, on a warm summer morning in North Carthage, Missouri, it is Nick and Amy Dunn's fifth wedding anniversary. Presents are being wrapped and reservations are being made. When Nick's clever and beautiful wife disappears from the rented McMansion on the Mississippi River. Husband of the Year Nick isn't doing himself any favors with cringe-worthy daydreams about the slope and shape of his wife's head. But passages from Amy's diary reveal the alpha girl perfectionist could have put anyone dangerously on edge. Uh, under mounting pressure from the police and the media, as well as Amy's fiercely doting parents, the town golden boy parades an endless series of lies, deceits, and inappropriate behavior. Nick is oddly evasive, and he's definitely bitter, but is he really a killer? As the cops close in, every couple in town is soon wondering how well they know the one that they love. With his twin sister Margo at his side, Nick stands by his innocence. Trouble is, if Nick didn't do it, where is that beautiful wife? And what was in that silvery gift box hidden in the back of her bedroom closet? So, kind of get the story a little bit. Uh, you know, missing wife, possibly not great husband, but husband is claiming innocence, people around him are claiming innocence, but it's becoming to the point where 
the evidence is sort of stacking against him. Um, so, uh, can I do this back up? Okay. So, um, I wanted to make sure I'm very uh, specific about this timeline because I want to make sure I give this warning beforehand because I know there are some people that really, really care about spoilers. So, if you are planning on reading this masterpiece of a book um, and you do not want to be spoiled, you do not want to know anything, um, I recommend skipping this part and like going to the last minute of this video because I am going to be talking about spoilers in my personal review of Gone Girl. Um, so that's what I recommend. If you don't care, I recommend you watch. Or if you've already read this book, girl, you're about to agree some, you, you're, you and I should have a chat um, if you've read this book and are agreeing with the points I say. So um, first off, once again, as I said before, I love books that are written by, for, about women. And this is no, um, this is not an exception in any way. Um, even if it's a little darker than a lot of other women focused books or books that are um, aimed at women, it's a lot, lot darker. But I'm okay with that because you know why? Because women can be dark. Women can be, you know, villainous. We are complex human beings too. So, you know, this isn't really a problem for me. Um, this book is also definitely written for men, too. It is a cautionary tale for men. Um, th that, is, that is why this book is written. This is not only for women. It's definitely aimed at women, but it is definitely aimed at men as well. This is a for sure cautionary tale about how you, when going into a marriage, when going into dating women, they are dealing with a whole different um, agenda and have been told so many different things than you as a man have been told. And you should take that into account when you are dating. Um, I absolutely adore, adore the female gaze in media. Once again, this is no exception. As I mentioned before, movies and books like Little Women and movies like Barbie, I love the female gaze because it has been something that has been so missing from a lot of our media because so many things have either been written or directed by men. Um, even the Gone Girl movie was directed by man, a man. And you can tell. You can tell. Um, doesn't make it any less good, but there is a significant difference between reading the book and the movie. Um, and I, I'm just now realizing it's that, that tone, that that undertone. So anyways, um, and I know I'm not the only one that agrees with this, that agrees like, yes, this is a dark book, but it captures the female experience so well when it comes to dating. Like some, uh, we talked about this, I talked about this movie in class one time and someone raised their hand and was like, so would you really like frame a man for murder if you found out he was cheating on you? And obviously I'm joking to anyone watching, I am joking. I would never ever frame someone for murder. But jokingly, I was like, yeah. And all the other women in the room also said yes. So it is not just me who um, feels this way. Um, so Flynn totally, totally, just totally and completely encapsulates what it is like for a woman on the dating scene, for a woman in a marriage. Oh, I could. Mm. So if you don't know, if, or if this has not been your experience, in typical straight relationships, stereotypically, it is there is this societal pressure to conform to the man that you are dating, to conform to his personality, to conform to what he likes, to conform to how he works, but it's not the other way around. Now, it can happen to men, and it happens in relationships too. Like, of course, in any relationship, you are going to, you know, um, take some of their personality with you. It just happens. It's part of being human. But for some reason, there is just this societal pressure on women that they have to completely conform and transform themselves when they're dating a man. Um, it's, it's just such pressure um, that you should change yourself because you'll be better if you're not yourself. And in some women, this causes a certain resentment, as in Amy, Amy Dunn, um, or she was first known Amy Elliott. 
um, with her maiden name. But like, there is definitely, 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 definitely a certain resentment that women um, can can gain if they're in a relationship with a man. And they look at themselves in the mirror one day and realize they don't recognize themselves. They realize they don't, they don't know who they are anymore. And I know I'm not, I'm, I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking on behalf of Amy Dunn's experience. I'm speaking on behalf of like plenty of other women's experience. And it causes you to like, not only like dislike yourself, but in the end, like dislike the man. Just like, why did he do this to me? Why, why wasn't I fine just the way I was? Um, and she really just encapsulates that feeling so well. And it, I think that's why a lot of women like this so much. It just makes them feel so seen in an issue that isn't really talked about. And you would think, like, an issue like that was over, you know, after colonial times or whatever. But, no, it still still happens today where women conform their personalities for the men that they are dating and, and change their self, change themselves totally and utterly completely just for the half the sake of a man. That's ridiculous. And, and she, she makes it a point to be like, this is stupid. This is ridiculous. Um, and even though, yes, she's a little crazy. I'll give it to her. She's a little crazy. She's literally framing her husband for her murder where in the end she is going to, she plans to have herself die. But God, I love, love her character. I love, love, love the character. I think she, once again, like many women that are written by men, she is complex. Oh, she is so complex. Like, sometimes you don't like her, but sometimes you are her. Sometimes I, sometimes I have thought the things that Amy Dunn has said in this book. Not about the killing stuff, but the feeling, the emotion, emotions that she's dealing with, the thoughts, the anger, the resentment, um, she is so complex of a character. And I love that they dive deep into more, like, this isn't just to get back at her husband for, like, cheating on her and changing her personality and not being the husband he was supposed to be. This is a, it's not just about that. It's about anyone who's ever wronged her. Like, this is to her parents who, you know, made her childhood into a book and character and made this book character better than herself to where she felt like she had to to compete with some someone fictional, you know? Um, and that's like a payback on them. That's like, well, you made me feel like I wasn't the perfect enough daughter, so now you, you don't get a daughter, you know? And then at, and um, you know, later on with their money issues, like you don't you don't get anything from me anymore because I'm done. I'm sick of being used and changed and, and molded into a way that people are going to like and buy into. Um, I also, I saw a video about this the other day, um, but I didn't realize it, um, but I'm realizing it now. Amy is such a femme fatale, but the difference between Amy and other femme fatales is that other femme fatales, which if you don't know a femme fatale trope, it's like a woman that's scary, but she's mysterious and you want to get to know her but you don't want to get too close because she's going to hurt you um femme fatale is pretty much code for a strong woman a strong woman <laughs> um for the most part i would i would like to say um and amy is that and she's a femme fatale but the difference between her and other ones is that uh most other femme fatales in other literature or media or whatever they either are punished for the way that they are acting, or they or they die. They get killed, or they di like die in some way. So basically, giving a message to women like, don't be like this woman because you will die or be shamed or whatever. That's not the case in this book. In this book, Amy wins. So now she doesn't frame her husband for murder, but she is able to manipulate him when he gets back, when she goes back to him because he was able to manipulate her into coming back um, by saying, like, you know, airing out, like, well, I'm going to, like, in a, only a way that she would know, like, on the TV, like, um, you know, I, I'm going to change if you come back, like, if you ever show up again, like, I've changed, I'm going to be the best husband, 
you know, for you. Like, I love you. Even though that's not the case in Nick. I completely skipped over Nick, um, but I'm going to get to him back in a second. But that doesn't happen for Amy. She wins. She gets her perfect husband um, in her eyes. She gets her perfect husband. She gets the fa- She gets a family. She gets the house. She gets everything she wants. She wins. She wins. It shows that, like, you don't have to be this perfect, submissive, like, type person. You can, woman, you can be dominant. You can be smart. You can be complex. You can be angry. You can be furious. Um, you can, I mean, don't be manipulative. Obviously, I'm not, <laughs> not promoting that. But women, women are not, not just these soft creatures. They're so much more. And this book really talks about that. Um, and yeah, like I said, she just fully enveloped me in her character and, and, and Flynn's character of Amy. I was totally, totally sucked in reading her points of view. And I also want to say, um, it's not just Amy. I think all the women that are written in this book, like, uh, Nick's sister, um, I believe it's Officer Boney, um, the, the female cop that's investigating, uh, all the women in this book are written so well. They're all well-rounded. There's n- not a single um, one-dimension character. They're all so well thought out. And it's the fact that, like, she even, like, writes women's intuition so well about how Go um, never really liked Amy. There was always something about her that put her off. And uh, prof- uh, I was going to say Professor Boney, Officer Boney is the only one out of all these men in her industry is the only one to see through Amy's lies, to see through her manipulation. She's the only one to do that. Um, out of all the police officers, the police men that she works with, she was the only one to see that. Um, so not only does she write, you know, her main character, her main female character well and her other female characters well, she also writes her male character so well. Um, Nick Dunn. I don't hate him. You know, <laughs> he, she, um, he is just as complex. She genuinely captures the, the trope of like trying not to repeat the sins of the father complex that a lot of men have who have gone through those types of things that Nick went through with like an, a verbally and physically abusive dad and trying not to, um, recreate that later in life. She captures the complexity of that so well because he wants to be mad. He wants to do terrible things, which justifiably your, his wife was framing him for murder and he was going to be sentenced to die. You would be upset over that. Um, he really tries not, he tries so hard to not be upset. And like, it, it's just, um, she captures it so well, the complexity of it and how like, uh, it affected their marriage too, because he tried so hard not to feel anything that when he was upset or feeling any type of high emotion, he shuts it down. He becomes like a statue. And that really affected their marriage because Amy just, you know, as a couple, any couple would want to know how their partner is feeling. Um, it's really hard to do that in a marriage when your partner is constantly shutting down. Um, anyway. I don't completely hate his character. I He's charming. Like, the, she captures just, like, their... These complex people that... that just these great people. These people that aren't necessarily bad, but they're not necessarily great either. But she captures them so well. So, like, I would say even after he admitted, like, cheating on his wife, and, like, sometimes he would say very, like, violent thoughts about what he wanted to do to Amy because of all the stuff she's putting him through, I still liked him. I still was rooting for him. I was rooting for both of them at times. Um, there was never like, oh, I, you know, I definitely want Amy to win or I definitely want Nick to win. It was always, I don't know who to choose. Um, so yeah, it was very well balanced. I could film a whole bit. I would love to do a whole research video on their love hate relationship. It is so freaking fascinating how even after all this, Nick is like, I don't want anyone else. 
like the whole thing where he had the affair with the woman. As soon as he realized, like Andy, the woman he had an affair with, would be a problem in the court case and stuff, he completely lost interest. He completely realized, like, oh, I didn't really love her. The only person I've really loved is Amy, and as crazy and messed up as it is, I still love her. Like, there's a whole part where she's like, you, um, Amy is telling Nick, you wouldn't want anyone else. You were the best person when you were with me. I made you a better person, and you know that, and you know that even after all this, I'm the only person that's going to bring any excitement or passion into your life. And he, quite literally, in the next point of view, he's like, she got me. She ate that up. <laughs> like, she, she totally read him because he, he was just like, you're right. Like, he, and he hated that, but he's like, you're right. Um, I would love to write a whole research paper on that relationship. Um, oh my God. She also does such a good job of, I feel like this wasn't talked about a lot in media at the time, but she does such a good job of introducing like the nice guy trope that we all know and love today and even have experienced in our own personal lives. <sighs> um, the trope of this guy who's really nice and he would never pressure you into anything. and He always treated you so well, but there's a little manipulation behind all that. He's nice to you because he wants something from you. He wants you, so he's going to be nice to you, but not because you're a person and you deserve basic human decency. He's being nice to you to get something out of it. Um, and she does that so well with Desi Collings, her, uh, Amy's ex, like, boyfriend. Um, because it's, it's kind of shown in the movie, but I think it's really, really well done in the book. Um, where, like, she, she picks up on it. She's not dumb. Amy's a lot of things. She's not dumb. Um, she picks up on how he, like, he thinks he's manipulating her, or, he says, well, I'm taking care of you, and this and that. But in reality, he's, you know, feeding her healthy foods. He's trying to make her lose weight. He's giving her, uh, like, hair products. He's trying to change how she looks. Like, completely change the way she looks, her personality. Because she, she acts, like, a completely different way around him. Because if she acted how she actually felt and was, he would call her crazy. <laughs> like, he likes her because... He thinks that she's submissive and, um, you know, is a wounded animal who needs, like, care. When that's not the case. He, um, that's not the case for either of them. She is not that way. Um, and he thinks, well, I'm being so nice to her in this very sensitive moment in her life that she's going to get with me because I'm taking care of her, taking care of her. And by taking care of her, <laughs> he means, like, having her depend on him and having her uh, look how he wants to look and act how he wants to act. Um, and they do such a great job of doing that because you do think he's, like, a nice guy um, with honest intentions. But, you know, Amy is very intuitive and smart, and she's, she sees right through all of it. She sees right through how kind he's being, all this lovely food and all these lovely clothes. She sees right through it. She's like, mm, got to change this. Got to change this. I do also want to add, I don't have this in my notes, but I do want to add, um, I think the death scene of Desi, where Amy kills him, is a little more uh, gracefully, tastefully done compared to the movie, where she literally slits his throat, like, on screen and all that. In the book, um, it's done, like, you know, she kind of drugs him, and then later on she tells Nick how she did it, instead of, like, in the moment, from her point of view, view detailing it, um, she kind of just explains it to Nick, um, which is still, you know, gross and, ugh, but, you know, it's a little better than, like, physically describing all that. Um, and I want to add with my review, Flynn's writing is just so good. As a creative writing, um, uh, as someone who has a creative writing concentration, I look up to her. Um, she makes you think. She makes you want to take, like, notes. Like, she makes me want to write a research paper on this. Um, the writing makes you, you nod your head yes, or makes your eyes, like, bulge out of shock. Like, this woman can invoke feelings and makes your head 
think. Like, if I haven't seen the movie already and know, like, the plot twist, I think, like, my brain would have, like, been gotten, like, ten times more blind. Um, like, it wouldn't be as smooth as it is. Um, she's just such a good writer. I think she describes things well. Um, she has great character building, great world building, great voice, great tone. She's so good. So good. So, to end all this, I'm going to choose a quote uh, that I picked out from it. From the... From it. From... Jeez. From... Can I speak? From the book. Um, I have two in mind. Um, where is it? Um... Maybe I'll read the other one, because I, I can't find what I would think I was trying to find. Um, which I think this is the quote that I uh, talked about before, where she was telling him, like, I made you a better man. Here it is. So this is at the very, close to the very end, page 394. Um, she said, you are a man, um, you are a man, I say. You are an average, lazy, boring, cowardly, woman-fearing man. Without me, that's what you would have kept on being, ad nauseum, but I made you into something. You were the best man you've ever been with me, and you know it. The only time in your life you've ever liked yourself was pretending to be someone I might like. Without me, you're just your dad. Girl. Ate him up. And she's so right. She's so right. He, he literally talks about how he is scared of women because he's scared of um, getting angry like his dad and making them scared of him, which is totally a real feeling that a bunch of other men experience too. Like it's crazy. Like just to add on a little detail to that quote. But anyways, I've talked about it enough. If you're interested, I highly recommend this book. Um, if you catch me on campus, I will talk about this book with you and the movie. I'll talk about it if you've seen the movie too. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope y'all look forward to the next book of the month on the Mainstream Podcast. Bye!